Good morning. I'm Tony Momberger with the Redlands Daily Facts doing another video interview. I'm so honored this morning to be here with Warren Wood, known around the community as Woody, and uh, just recently honored by the YMCA in the room that we are sitting in, which used to be the pool, is now the Woody Center. Thank you so much for joining us today, coming out from Palm Springs. You have been uh, honored here because you ran the circus for a number of years. That's correct. I'm interested in hearing today about the history of the circus and your memories of the circus in Redlands. How did you come to be involved in this? Were you a, cir a circus person as a child? No, definitely not a circus person as a child. I loved the circus, but um, was never involved in it uh, at all. Uh, when I started teaching at Cope Junior High School, um, I felt the need for some physical activity. I had been on the swim team at the Univers University of Redlands. And um, so I started coming down here and went to an adult gymnastics class. At the Y? At the Y. And at that time I met Roy Coble, who was in charge of the circus. And of course, he founded the circus um, because it was one of those avenues for um, displaying what the kids had been doing during this, the year in all of their gym classes. Just to clarify, this isn't something that YMCA's all over the place have, right? That's correct. This is unique very to correct. us. Very correct. Now there's some community circuses around, but uh, as far as I know, um, at least at that inception, it was not something that um, uh, any other wise were doing anywhere in the country at that point. Okay, and so how did you end up involved in this? So, well, um, the gym class was part of one of the programs and it was an element that they wanted to show, so there were a couple of um, years there where I was actually a performer mm -hmm. doing what, what probably would be very embarrassing for me now to see uh, on the screen, it would it would be abysmal, Does probably. Exist? Yeah. Um, no, footage doesn't exist oh. of that. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. But anyway, um, Roy Coble retired, and um, he had built the circus up because he started doing circus acts. That um, the, and the kids saw these things and they said, "Oh, we want to do those too." So he started adding things that were more of a circus nature rather than uh, a display of what they've been doing in the gym classes. This started out as a display of what was going on in the gym classes yes. at the YMCA? Yes. Yeah. Ah. And there was some funny, um, Tuzi Goots was the name of one of the classes. Don't ask me what it meant or what they did, but um, that was a, a typical thing. And then he started adding a, a lot of acts that he was involved with and that the kids became involved with that. Uh, when he retired, um, Dave Umbach was a member of the staff. He was like assistant director, and he sort of took over because he had been one of the participants in some of those acts mm -hmm. and uh, a very, very fine performer. And then he uh, got another job and um, was just, you know, leaving the scene. And I thought, you know, this is such a good program for youth in the community. I would hate to see it go away. And none, none of these people, you and the other two, were trained circus professionals. That's true. That's true. And you had a full-time job at Cope. Yes, I was a librarian and teacher at Cope Junior High School during this whole era. Which yeah. was the 80s, 70s? Well, it was the 70s, basically, when I first started. I've got my crib notes here. Um, let's see, um, it was 1971 oh where I started working with it. Um, and a, a young gal, Ann Sackett, the two of us um, started working on the show. And I uh, actually did it one for, for one full year. And then um, I took over because she left. And um, then we kept adding acts and um, more and more for the student, students. And we gained expertise as we went along. 
uh, as we met um, a lot of really interesting um, circus professionals. And there was a circus in Peru, Indiana, which was a youth circus, and we made friends with them, and Wenatchee, Washington has a show too. And so as we made friends with these people, we learned about different kinds of acts, and of course went to every circus that you could imagine. This seems risky to me. You've got people who are not trained in circus, who have no history with it, and the equipment, I imagine, is expensive. It's a big investment, and, and there's danger. There's physical danger if you don't know what you're doing, right? Well, yes, but we minimized a lot of that. You know, there's, you know, the mats, crash pads, uh, mm -hmm. spotting devices um, was very important. And you just learned how to do all that stuff. I've seen the circus. I'm, I'm really amazed right yeah. now. Well, one of the crucial elements in our expertise and gaining that expertise was Bobby Yurkus. He was a circus performer, but he did a lot of shows um, as stunt work for the major studios. Um, I don't know whether you go back that far or not, but there was a film called Earthquake. Oh, yeah. And um, Towering Inferno, and he did all the stunt work for that. And um, so it was, uh, we, we went Saturday afternoons, Sunday afternoons to his house mm -hmm. uh, in Los Angeles area, and um, we learned all sorts of things. And actually, our first flying trapeze rig, um, I purchased elements of it, mm -hmm. and he showed us how to weave a net. So uh, the first net was hand woven in um, a garage during the winter. It was very cold in the garage, but um, that's how we got started. Wow. And how many kids did you have when you started? Was it successful right off the bat? Oh, it was successful right off the bat. And kids wanted to do this and more, you know, I'm in this act, I want to be in another act and another act and so forth. And it was more a problem um, to tell them, no, you need to limit yourself and you can only do so many. What are we talking about? Unicycle? I know there's the, and I'm not good with this, stuff, but is it the webs where they hold on to the straps? Yes, uh-huh. Um, yeah. There were clowns? Oh, of course. There's the ball they roll in? Uh, rolling globes. Okay. What else? What am I missing? Okay, well, uh, trapeze, single trapeze, uh, a lot of aerial acts where um, one, we sort of initiated, um, Actually, three of us found some equipment in the basement of the, of the uh, old gym and uh, brought it out, and they call it cradle. It's where you're, you're in a device where you hook your feet underneath and hang from your, your, your knees and build sort of upside down pyramids. And uh, that started with three. Now the, it has been a staple with the show, and uh, you will see as many as uh, maybe a nine lane cradle rather than a three lane cradle. And it had been all men, but now it's girls and, and guys. Originally the circus was all boys? No. Just the no, cradle? No, just okay. that particular okay. act. Yeah, okay. that particular act. And it was in the, what's now the gym, right? Well, we were in the Roy Coble gym, which is it's now the um, workout room, you know, with all the, um, uh, equipment, you know, the aerobics equipment and the lifting equipment and so forth. And that was, um, we brought in bleachers and I've been under the floor and in the rafters and uh, putting equipment up, lighting, all that type of thing. It seems to me we also went outside. Did it go, did it partially go outside? Well, actually, um, we had some acts that of course wouldn't have fit in the old gym and Flying Trapeze was one of them. And um, we also, one season, just one season, did um, High Wire. And uh, some of our, our performers had been uh, involved with, um, Marriott Corporation had an amusement park up in San Jose. And um, that was, the performance was called Circus Fantastic. And it was Marriott's Great America. And uh, we, I interviewed people in some of the major circuses around, and they had a show in the uh, Chicago area in Gurney. 
And uh, so there was um, two different, there was another fellow that was uh, involved with the Wenatchee Circus, took the show in Gurney, and I did the one in San Jose. And we did, um, well, it was like five performances every day, except on the weekend. We had one day off. And uh, they were short performances, like about 45 minutes. But uh, when you're in an amusement park, you want to spend time doing something else other than seeing a show. And so we did that, but we learned so much from our affiliation with all these other youth groups that it was um, an exceptional offer. And so we learned that type of thing, and we borrowed their high wire equipment for that one uh, show. So that was, the, it was basically the flying trapeze that was outside. Have you uh, continued to do circus thing? Do you, do you still perform? No, I, I don't perform. Okay. Um, when I, I finished working with the YMCA, I uh, still, of course, am a, a devotee of, of the circus. You know, I've seen practically all of the Cirque du Soleil shows. Um, not all of them. I'm behind. I have to do a Las Vegas catch-up. Okay, Close. Cirque du Vampire on, uh, later this month. Oh, Fox. really? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, the history of safety, uh, have there been any injuries? Or? Yes, there's been some injuries. Uh, nothing major, fortunately. And um, I messed up my leg um, on teeterboard. And there's been a couple of ankle injuries and so forth, but fortunately there's been no major um, injuries. How many years did you do this? I did it, what was it? Um, 19 years. 19 years. Any, any uh, memories stand out in particular? Any good stories? Oh, well, there's a ton of stories. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. Ed, the, the circus um, work that we did, we did a lot of with malls. Um, over in San Bernardino, Central City Mall, mm -hmm. we were sort of a staple every year and did performances there um, at least once a year, sometimes two times a year. We worked with uh, Disneyland for a while and they had a um, Halloween parade and as the parade went through a stadium area, we were, um, d we did a performance before as the audience was gathering and, and um, preparing for that. So uh, that was a lot of fun. We got to know a lot of people um, in Disneyland, some of the producers and so forth. And uh, one of our very fine performers and instructors, Glenn Duncan, uh, if you ever see a logo of the Great White Circus, a great all-American youth circus, and it's uh, with a chaser-like type of a thing when you see the shows in the background. Uh, Glenn designed that, and it's still the default logo. He works for Disneyland now. And um, some of the other people we worked with, we, we did a lot of individual road shows. Mm -hmm. They'd say, we want a couple of circus acts, and so uh, mostly it was flying trapeze. And I was the first catcher for flying trapeze, and that was a hoot. And um, Danny Castoldi, who is still instrumental in what's happened um, here at the Y, he continued after, um, after I stopped doing the show, and he goes by um, the stage name or the trade name of Danny Castle, and he and his wife uh, still perform and uh, do convention shows, uh, need some acts and so forth, and they provide that type of entertainment. And um, they're still involved um, with the show. And after I left, uh, there were a few years where the National YMCA was very concerned about safety. And of course, they were pulling all sorts of things, and trampoline was one of the things. And of course, we used trampoline, and a lot of the skills based on that and uh, it was very difficult to get insurance. So um, I was not involved with the Y at that point. Um, and Danny Castle and his organization and uh, CCAC, um, the private, well, um, supporting organization, 
uh, which we'd started when I was involved, um, did the show up at Prospect Park for a couple of summers. And I'm not quite sure I was I not involved that. with that. in the that. early 90s. Yeah. And John Garrett was one of the persons who was instrumental in doing that. Um, but uh, it continued and then it eventually came back to the Y. And um, insurance capabilities changed nationally for the YMCA, so they're able to, to pick up a lo lot of insurance. But um, the, the circus is to be highly commended and the YMCA for their, uh, uh, their safety record and for you watch the show and there's spotters all over the place. And some of the very difficult acts like um, the, the trapeze act that the girls do and they do some extremely difficult stunts, stunts that you see in the show and big shows and so forth, but they have a safety line on them. So if they, they miss a stunt, you know, and they're detached from the trapeze, they have a safety line on them. Okay. Do you keep in touch with any of the kids that you taught? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Facebook is uh, very, very important. Uh, they're on the line, and there's, there's one for the Great White Circus. Mm -hmm. And um, we keep in contact all the time. I'm writing a post, you know, usually I mean, at least once or twice a day. Really? Oh, yeah. So This circus has really put Redlands on the map. Have other YMCA's copied it? Has anybody? I don't know of any other YMCA's. Wow. Okay. And there are some fun facts. Is it like it's the longest running community circus in the nation or? World. In the world? Yes. Wow. So that's... Extremely commendable. That's really great. That's really something I think this town is proud of. Uh, I'm going to switch to your teaching at COPE. How many years did you teach at COPE? Uh, 30 years. 30 years at COPE. Mm -hmm. And you taught you were at the library? Yes. Well, I was uh, English and the history, you know, it's a basic course mm -hmm. curriculum, two hours with the same students, and then got started in the library, um, had a new facility, and it was just like you can't do the teaching and the library, so I became the full-time librarian and did that for the rest of my career. Okay, and you I mentioned you taught me computers back yes. when it was um, nothing like what we see today. They were brand new in probably 1981. Yeah, TRS 80s. <laughs> and you worked with your husband, Doug Hergrove, who yeah. was my, I'm starstruck sitting here right now, uh, my English teacher for two years in, in the GATE program in the mm -hmm. early 80s. Right. And uh, I, was, I was really inspired. I think I remember every lesson and chart that oh my God. I really do. <laughs> I recreated them for my children when they went through eighth grade. Cool. Um, have you been to COPE since you, you live in Palm Springs now? Do you come back and visit? We came back for the 50th anniversary. Yes. They had a night when it was the fifth, celebrating the 50th anniversary. We went to that, saw lots of former students, many former teachers. But we're in touch with a lot of the students. That we probably over 500 students that went to us to our classes at Cope or went to school there. We're in touch with. He's the on real Facebook. Fa yeah, he's a real Facebook Facebook person. Oh my gosh! So, it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are, are you doing any teaching now, or are you just retired? And well, <laughs> my ties we, we still have ties with schools. We um, are on the board of uh, Safe Schools, Palm, um, Safe Schools Desert Cities. He's president. And um, we helped found that organization, and we work with the GSAs, the K-Strait Alliances, at about 12 schools in the Coachella Valley and Yucca Valley. Mm -hmm. um, so that keeps us in touch with schools. Have, have things changed a lot? Oh, have so they what, changed? <laughs> what kinds of things have you noticed? Uh, how am I trying to phrase this? COPE was very different then. For the people who are watching this and, and don't know, what were, what were the schools like in the early 80s in Redlands? Or, before, well, well, for 30 years. I, I, I can say this, that when we had visitors from, come from other school districts <clears throat> and visit COPE, they always accused us of teaching in a country club. And it wasn't really a country club. We didn't serve the country club area, but we had great teachers, wonderful families, great kids, fabulous staff, and most of the principals were wonderful. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, and you were, when I was there, I keep referring to the early 80s, and I know you were there for a longer span than that, but an openly gay couple on campus in Redlands. Yeah. That is really remarkable. Did you get any complaints? Was there any pushback from that? Or no. Was this no, an accepting wasn't. environment? Very accepting. Very commendable. We tell everyone we know that um, we think that that was, it, it really worked because when we went, we were just like fresh out of college. We were seen as roommates, even though we were a couple, even in college. And um, then by the time people started figuring it out, uh, we already had great reputations as teachers and, and being involved in the community and so on and so forth. So I don't think it mattered. All right. And you had made a comment before we started taping that you think it would be different today. Um, I think it might be harder for an openly gay couple to be involved in teaching. Mm -hmm. um, people look for couples and sometimes if they have an agenda that is anti um, acceptance of gay um, couples, they beeline in on, the, on that particular thing, and I think it might be more difficult. Hopefully not. Okay. What didn't I ask that I should have asked? What gem of a story are you guys holding that Well, I, I don't know. I, I was sitting over there listening to what Woody and you were talking about with the circus, and um, I think, I don't know how long you want this to be, but... <laughs> I'll go for it. Um, I just think that there are lots of things about circus that um, that people don't realize how important it was to the kids who took part because we're still friends with a lot of those also as well as our former students and uh, especially Woody with the circus kids. And so for some of them it's meant a career. For some of them who have their kids still involved it's been a lifetime of circus. Um, so there are a couple of them that have kids involved who are now you know, in high school. And um, so that, I mean, that's a good number of years to be involved. I wasn't involved with circus except as doing publicity and things in the background. But um, a lot of the kids I had at Cope were involved with circus and it was very important to their lives. And many of them weren't the best students. Some were, but many of them weren't. And it was a wonderful thing for them to grab onto and have for themselves and their families. So. Give them a way to yeah. shine. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, Gave them a place to hang their hat. Some of these people, as Doug was saying, were not academically oriented. Although some of them are, you know, we have some graduates that are still involved, uh, the McNaughton's. And, you know, the, the major doctor here in town. Mm -hmm. But some of them, um, in fact, one gal um, was dyslexic. And this became the place for her to be able to shine. And she did so well. She's probably the best female performer we've ever had. And um, she went on to um, work with a professional company, married into a family that did flying trapeze. And um, she was actually a part of a group that went over to Monte Carlo, where they have an annual circus competition and uh, the Flying Trapeze Act that she was in uh, received third place, but as a single performer on, on trapeze, she received first place. Now this is worldwide. It's a resident. So, yeah, yes, uh-huh. And Jill uh, Fenders is, uh, now it's Pages is the last name, and uh, she is still actively performing. Actually, as far as I know, She's the only one that has uh, completed a three and a half. That's on flying trapeze. It's a leg catch, and it's very difficult. So you have to have a fantastic catcher, and um, no one, no one does that. I'm not sure she's still doing it, but um, this is amazing. Three and a half turns. Yes. Okay. Can you do that? Okay. Can no. you do the? I mean, the flying trapeze. The... I was a catcher, okay. but. Uh, I didn't a, catch any three and a half, so that's for sure. <laughs> was it scary? Uh, the first few times? 
Well, getting up on equipment, you know, it, it was a little bit, but it was exciting. Okay. It was fun. Something new, something different. <laughs> Well, I sure do appreciate you coming out here from Palm Springs this morning and sharing your stories. Thank you. Our pleasure. <laughs>